Welcome to Electra Online. Here's our next example, which is a little bit more complicated because the hardest part always is finding the limits of integration and finding the correct order sometimes. Again, correct order just simply means what's the easiest way to do it because you could essentially do it in any order if the limits of integration allow you. So we're going to integrate over a section of a cylinder and it's kind of hard to see what it is. It's this little wedge type. Notice that the back of it is the x equals zero plane. This is the side of the wedge. It only goes one quarter from the top to the side, like this. Then on the front end, it's angled at a 45 degree angle. We have y equals, the y equals x plane like this. And it cuts off at the x, y plane at the bottom. And so that hopefully gives you a fairly good idea what it looks like. Now we're going to integrate that dv over the volume where the function is z. In other words, there's some sort of relationship where the higher you go linearly up from the xy plane in the z direction that it increases linearly with z. Maybe it's the density of something or the charge densities, whatever it may be. All right, so notice that we have the equation of the outside of the cylinders, y squared plus z squared equals one because it's centered, the cylinder is centered around the x-axis and therefore z equals the square root of one minus y squared. So it looks like our first integral should go over z. So let's do that. So this is equal to the integral, double integral over x and y. We don't know yet which order we're going to do it in, but the z integral is going to go from zero to the square root of one minus y squared, and that would be z equals that. And so we end up with um, z dz, and then here we have dy dx. We'll worry about the order of those later. That's a fairly easy integral. So this is equal to the double integral of z squared over two, evaluated from zero to the square root of one minus y squared dy dx. And let's see here. Uh, well, the one half goes in the front. We plug in the upper limit. When we plug in the lower limit, we get zero. So this becomes one half times the double integral of one minus y squared dy dx. And uh, now we have to worry about what our next integral is going to be. So let's see here. I'm going to integrate, I integrate in the z direction. Now should I integrate in the y direction or should I integrate in the x direction? Let's see here. When I, when, so we have a relationship here, x equals y. So what I could do is I could integrate over x from zero to y. How's that? All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to integrate this way. So this is equal to one half times the integral of dy times the integral of uh, one, one minus y squared dx. So that becomes a constant and we're going to go from zero to y. So this becomes one half times the integral of dy. We're going to integrate over dy at the end. And that's going to be from y equals zero to y equals one. That's straightforward. Then this becomes the quantity one minus y squared the integral of dx is x, and the limits are from 0 to y. All right, so that becomes 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus y squared times y dy. And now notice when we multiply this out, so this becomes 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of y minus y cubed dy. All right, now we're ready to integrate that. That would be very straightforward. So now we get uh, this is equal to 1 half times we have y squared over 2 minus y to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to 1. Plug in the lower limit, we get nothing, but plug in the upper limit, we get 1 half times 1 half minus 1 fourth. Of course, that's equal to one half times one fourth, which is equal to one eighth. And that is one of the ways in which we can do that. We could do different orders, but that definitely does work. 
Uh, why did it work? Because on the second integral, we know that x equals y, so when we integrate over x, we go from 0 to y, and then we have an easy integral for the third one, and that is how it's done.